don't need nobody calling me while I'm me home. <laughs> What's up, world? Bobby Penn hanging out here with the Ink Podcast. This time I am with Chef Kenneth Temple. How are you? I'm doing great. I like that introduction, that little breakdown in the beat, the little cadence. I like that. You know, a little, a little flow, a little rhythm, a little soul. Speaking of soul. Speaking of soul, you hail from New Orleans, which is full of soul. Please tell me how that influences your food and how you prepare food. I mean, you know, being from what I like to call one of the meccas of food in the world, it's it's, it's really, really dope because we have all of these different countries that came together in this one spot. So the African, the Native American, the, the French, the English, the Spanish, the Italians, the Germans, all of those different cultures play a part in this big old melting pot. So, you know, I, I got I got a lot of soul just from, of course, my upbringing with all the jazz and brass music and that good old wholesome family up style, you know, a couple of beatings when I got out of line. But, you know, that that New Orleans, you know, we we our own own little island. You know, we like to say New Orleans is a state of its own. You know, outside of Baton Rouge and Shreveport and Lake Charles and Lafayette, you know, we we all know that New Orleans is in its own little bubble. Yes. Sure. So tell me, how did you become interested in cooking at all? Usually when we think of cooking in gender roles, quote unquote, we think a woman thing to do. So how did you come to say, hey, this is kind of cool. I'm good at it and I want to pursue this. Right, right. So when I was a when I was a kid, I can remember being like three years old, helping my pops bake because my pops used to do a lot of baking at home you know for the fun so i remember being three helping him crack the eggs for desserts and stuff like that when i was about eight years old i rented an omelet cookbook from the school library and used to make omelets you know little three egg Ooh. omelets i used to chaw my little sausages i like it a little crispy you know chaw my sausage you know make a little egg some cheese make this little sausage egg and cheese omelet and I was like eight. And then I probably made like some French toast after that. But other than that, I was like everybody else. I was outside playing around with the kids. When dinner going to be ready? You know, I was that kid. So I didn't grow up at grandma's stovetop like most people who get into the world of cooking because they remember grandma's flavors in the ass. That's not my story. But upon graduating from high school, I had to make a decision what I was going to do with my life. And so the college that I went to, Nickel State, they had a culinary program and I had a cousin playing football out there. So I knew I could check out the school. I can go, you know, stay the night and really get the real feel for it. And so I kind of was like, well, you know, cooking's cool. I, I, I guess I, I'll go try this. You know, it's either cooking or computers and I didn't want to be on no computers. So <laughs> I feel right. you about that. So you were telling me a little bit before we got started here about how you became a personal chef. So tell me about your journey from going from a hobby to your actual career. Yeah. So so when when you when you get into the the actual major of the program for the culinary arts at the school, you start to figure out your niche and figure out if you're really good at it. So I remember a couple of times making dishes when I was first starting Silas in the class, coming into the second part of the the program where the chef the, the chef instructor himself pulls everybody over individually and tells them if they should be switching majors or not and he basically told me you know son you you should really run with this is really you're really good at it so those little boosts of confidence really helped me focus and lock in on it and then upon graduating i was working at a restaurant i was talking to my uncle who's a doctor about you know everybody once you get a culinary degree everybody asks you when you go open up your own restaurant right that's that's the question. When you open up your own restaurant, <laughs> I'm not. So uh, with that, I was telling them, you know, I want to go the private chef route because I enjoy the intimacy of cooking. You know, for you to see me preparing the dish, serving it to you, watching your eyes light up when you taste that, take that first bite and just savor that moment, you know. So um, he hooked me up with a guy who was cooking for Chris Paul and Reggie Bush at the time, Chef Patrick. And Chef Patrick, me and him met. We had a good little rapport. And about three months went by. And he called me, I was like, man, look, one of the hardest players looking for a chef. You ready? I said, give me his name and his number. And that's how the history started. So I left that job working on the line, making $9 an hour to making $75 for making one dish. Wow. So, wow. So we know I really, where I went. I'm sorry, go ahead. I said, we know where I went. Bye-bye <laughs> restaurant. <laughs> no doubt about it. What I love most about what you just said is you appreciate the response of the person that you prepare for. So for you, cooking is an act of service, it sounds like. Yes, definitely, definitely. It definitely is. It's, it's what I do. Sometimes I'll go by friends, 
houses and their moms be in the kitchen and stuff and somehow I find my way helping them pull out something out, stirring the pot, serving this, washing that, just to because I found that naturally I feel good in the kitchen. And not to not to go back on the story, but finding out once I really was serious in it, I found out uh, like all of the men on my dad's side of the family really cook. You know, I got two cousins who were chefs, my dad cooked, all my uncles cook. You know, so it's really in the in the bloodline for us to throw down when you was talking about the gender role, you know, the reversal. I love that. So, I love that that's the thing that kind of binds you guys together. It sounds like um like a family tradition even. Right, right, right. Cool. And and nobody no, nobody tells you that until they see you're serious about it, right? Like nobody, you know, just gives you that information voluntarily. It's like, oh, you serious about this? Well, you know, your uncle, your grandpa. Oh, <laughs> oh right now. Now you won't tell me. Right. <laughs> well, better late than never. And it seems like you, you found your path to destiny anyway. So tell me about your uber popular Facebook live show that you've been doing. You reach anywhere from 15 to 30,000 people per episode. Yeah. How'd you get started and, and why do you want to do this? So, so the hunger trap, I mean, like right after we finish this, of course, I'm gonna go prep up so we can uh, jump on there tonight. It was just, I was a part of a project and I seen a response that people had gave me when they saw my video and also from the beginning when we was just doing the production just how easy and comfortable i was in front of the camera saying my lines walking people through the food you know if you ever have an opportunity to catch me doing a live cooking demonstration like i'm i'm live like i'm, I'm in it so it was an opportunity that i i appreciated and once that uh, opportunity went about his business you know it went that way i i just had the opportunity to to still stay in front of people, right? So Facebook Live started being open to everybody, and so I just cut on some trap music and, and went from it. Like, my kitchen is like a trap kitchen. Like, it's not beautiful. It ain't got the best coat of paint. I don't have all the beautiful cabinets. And so I was kind of like, man, nobody's going to really appreciate it. But one of my friends was like, bro, just do it. Just do it. You never know. So I just started running with it in February, and I've been going every Tuesday since then. Took a small break in May, but every Tuesday coming live out the trap. So I used to call it trap kitchen, but you know, they got the young guys in, in Los Angeles who got the trap kitchen. So just so I don't step on those toes or cause any confusion, you know, I switched it over to hunger trap because like the video you playing right now, right? W what you think about that, Bob? It's very uh, attainable if you would, and it looks tasty, yeah, we, but I love so how it's just kind of like stripped down and I could do this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so now you just got hit with the hunger trap, right? And, and I'm seasoning up those shrimp with my savory blackening season right there, right? So it just dropped that too. So, you know, it's just a way for me to just give back to the people and help people get back in the kitchen and start cooking. You know, I find a lot of people, you know, with the time constraints that they say that they have, if you find simple techniques and somebody to teach you really, you know, how to cook, you know, it, it makes, it take the pressure off you basically. See that video right there, Bobby? That essence? Yes. See, when I came out messing with Carla, she didn't know what was about to happen. <laughs> yes, I was going to ask you about this. So you got to contribute to the Essence Festival, not only in New Orleans, but also in South Africa. So tell me about how that came about. Yeah. So uh, our mayor, our current mayor right now, Mitch Landrew, I used to be his private chef. So he used to have different functions at City Hall, and I used to cook for them. And with that opportunity led to another opportunity where I, I literally found out I was going to go to Africa this first time in the club. One of my friends was like, they're trying to send you to Africa. And I looked around. I'm like, who are they trying to send to Africa? They were like, you, Kenneth. I said, you show sure Kenneth Temple? You, you show me? She was like, yeah. And, the, and like, you know, and, you know, and you're know, in the middle of a party. You don't expect nobody to be like, yeah, they're trying to send you to Africa. Dude, wait, hold on. Maybe I'm drinking too much. But uh, Durban is actually a sister city of New Orleans. So they kind of, you know, we kind of trade and balance off of one another with tourism. And so they was looking for an ambassador from this culinary perspective to send over there. So I ended up going over there one year, went over there the next year. And that next year is when I met all of the big wigs at Essence Fest. And so that opportunity presented that with the networking. And then when they officially had signed on to bring Essence to Durban, I had my friends who had an in and it was like, man, you, you need to bring Chef Kenneth. So even before they bought me in, they was having the roundtable discussions and my name kept dropping. Wow. So I was a part of that last year for the first time. And I think he just showed the little clip. I, I came out to wipe me down. You know, I had to bring that, <laughs> you know, I had to bring that Louisiana all the way over there. Yeah. 
I love it. I love it. Opportunities. Today's Boozy's birthday too, so. <laughs> Happy birthday, Boozy! Yeah. <laughs> so I wonder if your name kept coming up because of this uh, Hormel Foods endorsement you just got. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah. So working with Hormel Foods, and I hope we could do a lot more in 2018. So a friend of mine had found a post where they were speaking of looking for African Americans to partake in this particular. Um, subgroup that they was doing. So basically Harmel was highlighting different subgroups within their corporation. And in February they was doing Black History Month. And I got the nod to do it. I went through the interview process and the guy who was actually going to be cooking with me, Harold, he was from New Orleans. Harold right there on the screen. And we had that New Orleans like, oh you're from New Orleans? We're like, whoa, you know what's up, baby? And like everybody in the room was like just elated by it. So when they saw my professionalism and I told them I wanted to do smothered Oprah. You know what's most southern, more relatable to the community of our, you know, of our community than some some good old smother Oprah without the slime. So, I just had that opportunity to go up to Minnesota and, and represent. Amazing, amazing opportunity. And speaking of representing, you did your thing on a. Uh, excuse me. We saw you do your thing on Chop last week, and you actually won. Yeah, 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 so yeah. tell me about that experience. I love watching Chopped. I can't cook nearly as well as anybody on that show, but I love watching you guys go. There's so much pressure. You don't know what's going to be thrown at you. So tell me what that was like. So did you catch? Did you see my episode, Bobby? I saw some clips. I ain't gonna lie. See, see, you see, you love, <laughs> you love it until you see me and you miss my episode. But you can always catch it on demand, right? So going on Chopped was one of these opportunities to to test my culinary, you know, my culinary background. Like, all right, you get this mystery basket challenge. They're going to throw whatever at you. Do you know enough to be able to produce a quality ingredient? So I, I went for it. I did the audition. Uh, I had a couple of friends that, that helped throw my name up higher in the rankings. And then they ended up picking me for the show. And then they put me on the all pie challenge at the fact. They, they put me in a pie challenge. None of my <laughs> clients asked me for pies. So... Like what you're showing right now, this is dessert round. I went for a no bake cheesecake in 45 minutes. So I and I normally you need six hours for that. But wow. I know my flavors was on point and I just went for it. So I took a big risk, but it was a fun opportunity. It was a very, very long day. I was the only person up in there representing for the South. And everybody else was restaurant guys. So I felt like I wanted to check my, my status as a private chef because as a private chef, you know, you kind of, I don't want to say you frowned upon in a restaurant game, but people don't think you got the same education because you didn't grow up in a restaurant scene. So gotcha. it was good for me to go up against these guys and show that I still had some beautiful culinary knowledge, even to the fact that like the second round I had made uh, my pie crust with vodka. And it was like, did you say you made your pie crust with vodka? And you know, yeah, I'm right. That's what I said. So. Notes. I just felt it was a good opportunity for me to, to test myself and to also see how I compare against other people. And Amazing. And you came out a winner. Stunning on all of them. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so, you know, it's amazing that you've had endorsements and TV appearances, but you can be in all of our own personal homes because you have a cookbook called Creole Southern. So Southern Creole. Southern Creole. Excuse me. Southern Creole. Around, yeah, just throw it around. Yeah. Southern so, Creole. Tell me more about this. So this is this is a love child out of the response I received from the hunger trap. Of course every chef wants to write a book of recipes so he can share his perspective with people. But this was just people really, really appreciating my craft and where I'm from, you know, with this whole New Orleans dialect I, I don't think there's anybody from new orleans really out there who's doing it like i'm doing it so i'm trying to make the masses understand it a little bit more so you know southern creole 75 plus recipes i did all the photos like wow. this is a sweet potato pound cake a sweet potato pound cake oh. i got i got <laughs> drinks i got sauces hold on wait let me get a drink so i got a daiquiri y'all y'all never been to new orleans you could bring the daiquiri to you Hey, let me show you what I'm cooking tonight, Bobby. Hold on. Let me show yeah. you what I'm cooking tonight. So it, this is just me telling my story from a toddler to, like I said, cracking those eggs with my father all the way through getting into some trouble while I was in college and getting suspended from school. 
and food actually becoming my salvation to right when I left uh, college. So I don't, uh. this is what I'm cooking tonight. So this is a blackened fish po' boy. So this one I'm cooking on a hunger trap tonight. So, you know, it's just my way of giving back to the people, you know, so they can have some of these beautiful recipes. Because I always see people doing the Wallace food the wrong way, mis misrepresent <laughs> my culture. So I just feel like I need to stand up, represent for the NOLA, and, you know, for the South, and just, just put out some of this great food, you know, along with the seasoning blend. You know, I got the, I got the seasoning blends to go along with it, you know. And you say you can't cook, right, Bobby? Do you, do you think you struggle with figuring out what flavors pair well with different ingredients? Well, that's among my struggles, <laughs> definitely. Struggles. See that right I'm there? also really impatient, um, which probably isn't something you can help with a cookbook. I can help you with that. You see that right there? This is the herbs and spice chart. So chicken, beef, pork, fish, all of that good stuff, you'll learn different spices. Now, how I can help you with your patience right now? I can help you with your patience in under five seconds. I'm listening. Do you rush love me? I try not Thank to. You. <laughs> Thank you. So be patient. So be patient in the kitchen because it's just like love making. You got to let, let it take a little time, you know, let them flavors develop and come together and then you end up with something beautiful at the end. Wow. Okay. That was a great analogy. Yep. Gotcha, Bobby. Me and your <laughs> friends now. I gotcha. I ain't going to let you hey, fail. Pen pals. Hashtag pen pals. <laughs> you me? Yeah. So I got to ask some celebrity questions because that's kind of the focus of what I do here. You have prepared for everybody from Lil Wayne. Um, you already told us about your NFL player friends that put you on and NBA players, Soledad O'Brien, even the mayor of New Orleans. Mm -hmm. Who was your favorite celebrity or notable figure to cook for and why? Who was my favorite? That's You're going to get me in trouble. Um, okay. Well, like an I got it. Wait, I got it. I got okay. It. <laughs> I'm fine with the trouble. So firstly, I would say to Julian Wright uh, of the New Orleans Hornets. Why? Because he gave me my first shot when I had no credibility, no credentials or anything. He just had, you know, a, a word of mouth that this guy can cook. So with Julian giving me that opportunity, I truly appreciate that because he gave me the confidence that I can do what I fulfilled my goals to be. So with Julian, that led me to cooking for Randall Emmett. And most people don't know who Randall Emmett is. Are you a fan of Power? Yes. Randall Emmett is an executive producer of Power. So when they had Hollywood South going on down in New Orleans, I had the opportunity to cook for him a few times. And, and just to see what that whole Hollywood production is. I was working with celebrity chef Jeff Henderson on two of his cooking shows. And working with chef Jeff allowed me to work on a time. Join a cruise for two years in a row. He taught me a lot, kind of took me underneath his wing, you know, rubbing elbows with Pat Neely, taking me to the Circles of Sisters in New York and cooking for Bobby Brown, making sure his barbecue sauce was ready when he come up, you know, all these different opportunities and traveling. So I say the, uh, definitely kudos to the first client that gave me my, my opportunity and look like I'm looking for some more celebrities to add to. So who are you going to hook me up with? Who do you know that need a chef? Who floating around New Orleans right now? Hmm. Oh, I actually do want to set something up. I don't know if it's somebody for you to cook for or cook against, but are you familiar with rapper Mia X? I am familiar with Mia X. I don't know her personally, but I know the mama Mia. Yeah. She cooks and she owns a restaurant. I can't tell you exactly where it is off the top of my head, but I have been, and she's a pretty good chef. I would love to set up some kind of like cook off. So I'm going to talk to Ante and we're going to set this up. I'm going to have to fly to New Orleans and, like, host this. I mean, you, hmm. you know, I, I cook, she raps. So. <laughs> you so say you going away, you think you're going to beat her? I say I'm going to take it one, one seasoning layer flavor at a time. I mean, I know <laughs> she's definitely notorious for her, her stuff, bell peppers. I, I definitely know that. Um, she actually did the Essence Fest the day, but uh, was it early before I went on? I think I had just had Mr. Dish at Essence because I know she had did a cooking demo at Essence. Mm -hmm. So I may have been a day before her or the opposite way, opposite way around. Okay. Well, that's something that we could definitely hook up. And then I got some other people who, when they come through, I'm pretty sure they love food in their dressing rooms. I'm already picturing somebody right now. Mm -hmm. um, so not to worry. I'm going to plug you in since we friends now. We got each other back. <laughs> yeah, I was just telling Nate, I was like, man, look, Tiffany Haddish down here in New Orleans right now. Where is she at? She yes. Get this, she get this three-course meal right now. Where is she at? So, Tiffany, we looking for you. 
Come get this. Yeah, I don't know where she had in the wall. And all right, so you got to tell us about this T-shirt you're wearing since we putting this uh, PDA out to find Tiffany Haddish. You are Chef Bay. Did you call yourself this, or your fans call you? What What is Chef Bay? What's that about? So let me tell you, in New Orleans, we got a we got a motto: nicknames on shows and they given. So as I do the Hunger Trap show, one of my one of my good followers of the show, she called me Chef Bay. So every time she'll see me, she'll be like, "Oh, Chef Bay, Chef Bay, Chef Bay." So I was like, "You know what? I'm just gonna go ahead on and embrace the Chef Bay thing." So I went, got me a little shirt. So now, anytime I'm on Hunger Trap, pound Chef Bay goes crazy. And you know, we're trying to just let the blogs pick it up because you know, there's always Teacher Bay, Lawyer Bay, 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 Bay. But you know, where's the where's the people that throw down in the kitchen? So I'm just trying to represent for that. So I'm just embracing it. You know, I'm just embracing it. You know, I definitely right. my nickname myself. Well, I'm gonna make that the headline for this interview right here, Chef Bay. We're talking to Kenneth Temple. <laughs> I'm saying your name right, right? You're saying it beautiful. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Chef Kenneth Temple. He has to go prepare right now for his Facebook Live cooking show called The Hunger Trap. It premieres Tuesdays, 8.30 p.m. Central Time, every Tuesday. We so make sure back. you go ahead. 9 o'clock. It's 9 o'clock tonight because he made time just oh. for the ink right here, which I appreciate. You know, all the fall shows came in and my numbers started dipping. And I realized, you know, everybody watching their fall TV shows. So I was like, all right, we're going to roll it back 30 minutes. And all everything's right. been beautiful since then. But yeah, I definitely had to make time for you, Bobby. Yeah. Yes, I appreciate it. Make sure you guys tune in. Where can everybody keep up with you? Online, website, social media, all of that. If you're looking for me, it's Kenneth Temple everywhere. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, my website. That's where you can go and buy the cookbook, or you can go buy the cookbook at Amazon. Make sure y'all go ahead on and follow me on Instagram and get hit with that hunger trap as you scroll on that page. You know what I'm saying? All right, then. It's the ink right here. It's holiday season. Hook up your meals at home, buy the cookbook for yourself, give it as a gift, make a New Year's resolution to cook better for yourself. I know I'm about to grab one for that very reason. And keep it locked right here to the show. Bring you what's new now and Nick next in the industry. It's Bobby Pin. <laughs>